In today's video, we're gonna share the full interview I did with Sandro Berger from Rebag Data about self-checking automation in hotels and his unique perspective as a service provider. Hello and welcome to another Ask Your Hotel Tech video. I'm Alicia from Hotel Spider, and if you're looking for answers to your hotel tech-related questions, you're in the right place. Here we share our know-how about hotel technology with you in video format. This right here is part of a four video series where we talk about self-check-in and check-in automation. If you didn't see the first video yet, I recommend you stop right here, go back, see, watch that first. I'll link to it up above in the cards. And once you've seen that, you can come back and watch this one. Today, we're gonna to share the full conversation we had with Sandro Bergo, the CEO of Rebag Data. The Rebag Data is a service provider to hotels here in Switzerland. They work with the system ProTel. They offer PMS, but also other solutions. And they work intensively with hotels every day to help them automize and optimize their processes. Here is his unique perspective. Enjoy the conversation. Hello, my name is Sandro Berger. I'm the CEO of Rebag Data which is a hotel tech uh, consulting and support provider in Switzerland. We are mainly um, a dealer reseller of Protel Hotel Software GmbH, which is a German uh, PMS uh, developer. So we're doing the whole Swiss market with uh, sales support, installation, training and uh, special customer adjustments. Rebag Data has been founded uh, 34 years ago by my father. Uh, as a, nowadays you would say, spin-off of a um, Treuhand company, accounting company. Um, they tried to develop a first PMS, didn't succeed, so uh, my father founded Rebag Data, took over the technology and uh, with the first customers they had, that time on uh, mid-range systems from IBM, developed one of the first PMS in the world. What are the specific tools that you offer to your customers when it comes to self-check-in? Talking about self-check-in, uh, we always focus on the PMS because we are PMS-based. We do not have standalone solutions. For us, it's, it's all modular-based. So we kind of start with different modules they can, they can add in different stages of the whole guest journey because we're talking self-check-in uh, is part of the guest journey, which first starts with Protel Messenger, which is a tool you can automize uh, uh, emails, pre-stay emails, uh, SMSs. So if you want the guest to do his own check-in, he first needs to know that he can do it. So you need to send him a link, you need to send him information, how and what he can do. You need to send him an application or a link to an app, uh, which has been done by Protel Messenger. Uh, the second tool then is basically where we do the pre-check-in and also the self-check-in is called Protel Voyager, which is uh, first of all a web app. So uh, if the customer in his pre-stay mail message uh, will click on the link or on the button, uh, Protel Voyager will open in the web browser where we provide the customer with different features. Um, for example, he can already buy additional things for his room or uh, let's say an airport pickup or a massage or a champagne on the room which is already there which will be directly transferred on his bill in the PMS of course. He can also contact the hotel, he can look up his room again, he can see f uh, further information on how to arrive and so on and because we're talking about self-check-in or pre-check-in, most important he can fill in the registration form with his signature, can provide a credit card uh, number in case the hotel does not have a credit card number yet to make sure they have some kind of security. So when he has done the online check-in, that's what we call, or pre-check-in, if you liked it better, and he arrives at the hotel, then there's different op um, possibilities, also depending on the hotel. I mean, one, I call it all already classic because it's been on the market for more than 10 years, is a check-in terminal which he will go to the terminal, look up his reservation, and then depending if he already registered everything, then he won't need to register again, of course. 
If you already paid, you won't need to pay again, but then that all depends on this check-in terminal, which is not our product, but we have um, good uh, interfaces with uh, almost everybody who's on the market. A different technology, different approach would be mobile key. So there is no terminal hardware from the hotel side, but everything is done on the mobile phone of the guest. And he has the mobile key on his phone and he can enter the hotel and the room by uh, the mobile phone. Basically, there is a third option which is mainly used nowadays, I think, because what a lot of hotels don't want to do is they don't want to print out the registration forms and then you have a handwritten registration form from the customer you can't read or you, you need to type it, you make typos, you make mistakes. So they would like to send, and that's the, the case we have a lot nowadays, they would like to send an online registration, Protel Voyager. They got all the information from the customer directly, usually also the email address and so on. So they basically do all the online check-in and they go to reception and just get the key from reception. What are the limitations today to actually just do everything on your mobile phone? Why, why aren't more people adapting that to just mobile check-in? The main limitations not to do a mobile check-in, or especially not to get the key on a mobile phone, is that, as I said, uh, guests don't like to download apps. What the problem is nowadays, um, we have only one standard, which is Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, which is universal. Bluetooth can only be activated by a native app. So you cannot have a home page or a browser page activating the Bluetooth in your phone. That means everybody needs to download an app. Paint a picture where, where do you sit or where does the PMS sit and what other technologies sit around for all of this to, to work? The PMS is in the middle, has all the information. You first get the information for a reservation from the OTA or from your own web booking engine or manually typed in if the guest is calling you or sending you an email. Also our own tool, Protel Messenger, which is an add-on of Protel Messenger sending out Voyager and Voyager where you can do the online check-in. Then it depends. Um, in a classic or already classic way, you have a check-in terminal where we interface it. The other thing would be, as I said, the mobile key. So for sure you need a, an electronic mobile key or a key system which allows for Bluetooth keys and you need to interface them as well. Then, when you want to go one step further, we didn't talk about it yet, self-checkout, then, of course, you need to interface your credit card terminal. How does the implementation process look like? Usually, we start first with this pre-stay. Yeah, that's the first step. So, uh, we make sure the hotel gets a decent uh, pre-stay, uh, decently designed pre-stay message which can be designed by the hotel itself. We have some very simple templates. We are not designers ourselves, but mostly be, it's been done by the webmaster, web designer. And then, I mean, setting up uh, the Voyager, uh, Voyager or Messenger is not a big thing because we don't need, we, all, we have the old information from the PMS and we use the same. You don't need to set up new prizes and stuff and so on. All the articles are already there. For what hotels do you see the, the terminal as, as being advantaged, does that only work as sort of a concept? Uh, Self-checking terminal is a little bit of a hybrid. The good thing on a self-checking terminal, you can actually do a walk-in. I mean, there are whole concepts of hotels or hotel chains, hotel groups, which actually do self-checking via terminal, which is well established. It's usually in the business sector, a little bit out of town. or when you have a dependency, when you have a second house or a third house, you can uh, put on a, a terminal. So the guest does not need to go to the main house to go to reception if he doesn't want to. Of course, he can still do this. For a luxury hotelery, I don't see any terminals. Usually they don't look that fancy or good enough for them, basically. But this online check-in, because it doesn't obstruct the eye anywhere, and you don't need to do it. You get a, you get a pre-stay mail with a lot of information. You can ignore it. You don't need to press the button for the Voyager. 
you don't need to do online check-in. You can do it. If you don't do it, you just go to reception as you want. A lot of things is hybrid nowadays. And I think that's the approach for most hotels, especially existing hotels. Can you give me some sort of ideas of cost or, or price models that, uh, that, that, that you apply for the pre-check-in technologies? Messenger itself doesn't cost anything. It's a free add-on when you send emails. Uh, the Voyager is a cloud-based software as a service model, so you pay a certain amount per month. Can you point out some of the limitations of self-check-in slash online check-in technology today? The one limitation is that you need to download an app. The other limitation is that people don't want to use it or are not used to it. What are the next steps? What are the next evolutions of this technology? Uh, it's the whole thing with voice or facial recognition. So basically, you can provide a photo to the hotel and you just enter the door because the door recognizes you from your face. On the other hand, it's a very, touch, it's a very a difficult issue because of data protection. Or you get recognized, I don't know, you got kind of a pass, let's say, like the Swiss pass, uh, something like this, or Swiss ID, which is fixed in your phone and you, you'll be recognized because you're registered with the same ID. How far do you think we're away from that? I think it's less a technological issue and it's more a legal issue. The technology is there uh, with facial recognition and so on. It hasn't been linked to hotel technology in specific. Let's say if you have your own house, you can also open the door with your fingerprint and this is not a new technology. Well, you can open it with facial recognition, but it's your house. You, you say you give the door to your phone, and it's always you or your uh, spouse or your children. You need to look at two parts. You need to look at data. Yeah, There we have the legal issue, and you need to do it the recognition uh, software or technology. And here, face, fingerprint, and especially voice nowadays. These are the new technologies or the newer technologies. You can talk to your car nowadays. You can talk to your phone. And the other thing is the databases, which are more and more consolidated, more and more accessible. But here we have this legal issue. Can you actually use the data? Of course, you have, when you have a Swiss ID, it's all registered somewhere. Police, you have all the data. But it's more. You recognize, you need to know who it is. Because in the end, you still need to issue an invoice, an invoice with, a, with an address. So I think these are the two parts, the data, existing data all over and how to recognize the physical appearance of a person, how to connect it to the data we have, the electronic data, because we are biological or physical and this is electronic. And here we probably have this gap. Is there any intermediary steps? Is there like, let's say, smaller, smaller improvements where you say, okay, these and these and these small things are going to make it easier for hotels to actually adapt the technology or easier for customers to adapt the technology? Yeah, I would say as an intermediary step is um, um, you, have your, you have your front office, you have your reception. I mean, you've got a guest walking in. You have a tablet in front of the guest. You send him the reservation details or he can then talk basically, to his small part of the PMS, which only allows him to adjust the data for the registration form. If he didn't do it on his smartphone already or on a check-in terminal or whatsoever, uh, this would be an intermediary step, I would say. How do, you, how do you find that balance between automation and personalization and human touch? How do you, how do you find that balance? I think it's, it's this combination. It's this, you need to find out, you need to try, and then you need to evaluate. You need to evaluate who uses which technology. Of course, then you need data. Because people, they go, yeah, they go to a hotel for a room. But in the end, they choose the same hotel again because they felt welcome. They didn't feel welcome because you send an automated message. But an automated message, message is, is an add-on that can help and give him more information or give him better information before he arrives because the journey doesn't start when he enters the hotel, it starts before. And... That was my conversation with Sandro. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, check out the rest of the series. Click that subscribe button, like the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and feel free to share this with your network. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. I'm Alicia from Hotel Spider. 
This is Ask Your Hotel Techie. Stay tuned for the next video.